there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Now this is a really fun technique that I had so much fun playing with today and I have never kind of done this on purpose before and I don't even really know what to call it but it's kind of a swiping technique and um, we are going to be making a print using well kind of anything I'm going to be using a whole range of things that we can find in your house or your craft room um, so just bear with me first up I'm going to be using some dies now any dies are pretty much going to work for these but I do find ones that are kind of less intricate work well um, but experiment and have a play around these I'm going to put cutting side up so the cutting blade is kind of facing upwards towards me I'm going to arrange them on my desk and then I'm going to be using some computer paper some copy paper very thin paper the thinner the better you can also use a range of pretty much any ink pads for this as well now I'm going to kind of use the top of the corner there uh, of the ink pad and then hold my hand up the top so that the paper doesn't shift and then just gently glide it over top of those dies and I get this really cool kind of print and again this is not groundbreaking but it is really really fun so I kind of went to town and tried it in a few different colors this is the VersaFine Onyx black ink pad and honestly this works well with pigment inks with dye inks whatever you have I mean of course we are swiping our ink pads so I guess it is using up a bit of ink so uh, perhaps if you are worried about that then use ink pads that you have re-inkers for but honestly I don't think it takes up too much more than any other technique would but those are the dies this time I'm going to move on to a stencil now this was a really thin stencil so I wasn't sure how this was going to go I'm using some over the moon uh, dye ink from Simon Hurley and again I'm just going to kind of tilt the uh, ink pad at a bit of an angle and run it over the stencil and it shows up beautifully now don't get me wrong there are definitely some edges there and things that aren't quite perfect or aren't quite as I might want them to be that's why I did the entire kind of big stencil and I can cut it down to use on a card front next up I have this little kind of trio of trees here and this is some I think this is 80 pound cardstock here and I wanted to see if I could create a little bit of a scene I guess and then I could either put die cuts on top of this and use this as just a backdrop or a background for a card I mean pretty so many fun options with this I really did have a really good time I like to keep these videos pretty short so I just included um, a little bit of this and then I turn a few of these into cards at the end but honestly this is a very very fun technique using kind of whatever you have around the house as well um, it could be really fun to try lots of different things so I was going with like a little sun or a little moon and I put it on an angle here just because that's sort of how I find it easiest to hold the paper uh, rather than going upright but I have like a little um, hills I guess I created down the very bottom and again it kind of creates a really nice shadow behind the trees and above the moon or the sun or whatever you wanted it to be at the top I really like that so now I'm going to use another smaller stencil again this is just uh, using the prom queen ink pad the dye ink and I'm just going to run it over and it picks up the pattern absolutely beautifully this technique kind of reminds me of <laughs> at school when I used to put leaves uh, on the underside of newsprinted things and had crayons on their side and I would you know do like leaf rubbings and things so you would um, kind of rub the crown evenly over above the leaves and all the little veins and things would pop out that's I guess what this reminds me of doing uh, just now as a grown-up and in my little craft space so this uh, stencil here is a little bit more intricate and has kind of quite a tight design to it so I just wanted to see how it would go and it goes pretty good I mean you still get quite a lot of detail and you can still tell what it is um, yeah a little bit does get lost obviously so sometimes the bigger designs are better but still works pretty well I think and then of course I need to do it in a couple of different colors 
<laughs> so anyway, this is a really fun technique. Uh, if you are inspired by this technique or end up giving this a go, I would really love to see how this turned out for you. And the easiest way for me to do that is over on my Facebook group, which I will leave a link to down below. The group is called Come Crafting with Natasha. And that way you can post photos of even just your prints or your finished makes, whatever you create. I would love to see them. Uh, this is a really fun technique and I imagine that there will be a lot of creative juices flowing after this because you can kind of use lots and lots of different things. So those are some of the prints that I ended up making. Now I'm going to take these flower dies which I used first of all to make the print but now I am going to uh, run these through and actually use them as die cuts. I'm going to turn a couple of these into some cards. I'm using some Over the Moon, Slippery When Wet and Guppy. These are some dye inks from Simon Hurley and I'm popping these down onto a non-stick craft sheet. This is actually the little replacement mat uh, for the glass media mat. It's a non-stick sheet that has the silicone backing so it stays in place nicely. I just really like the size and the price point. It is a nice little cheap uh, replacement mat in comparison to some of the bigger ones. Now here where we are going to use the background, this is one that I created, and we created them using uh, copy paper, which is very, very thin. So to adhere these down onto my card, I'm going to be, have to be a little bit careful. So I'm going to use some scrapbook.com double-sided adhesive sheets. Now the reason that I'm using these ones in particular is because it is nice and thick. And I want to give these pieces a little bit of stability because if I feel like if I just put them down with some double-sided tape or some liquid glue, that I run the risk of them going a little bit bubbly or not adhering kind of beautifully nice and flat like heavier cardstock would. And sometimes you get that rippling effect when you use a uh, paper that is too thin or not uh, a heavy enough weight. So that is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do to combat that. So I pop a little bit of this really nice thick double-sided adhesive sheets. What I do is I cut a piece that is just about the same size, if not a little bit smaller, and then I peel back a little bit at the top. Then I line up the bottom with uh, wherever I'm going to pop it onto. And then I slowly press at the top and release the rest. So here you can see I'm just pulling back a little bit of the release paper at the top. I line up the bottom, then I press down at the top, then pull the release paper down. And that way it is nice and even and I don't have any crooked edges at all or any of the adhesive poking out of the sides um, that I have to deal with when I run it through my die cutting machine or my trimmer or anything like that. Here I'm just making sure I have got a couple of smaller pieces and then that main frame is going to go down um, and become kind of a central panel down the front of my card. All of my cards today are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I did just um, dip these little flowers into that ink that I smushed down onto the nonstick sheet. Now I'm going to lay them up, some of them to create um, kind of a little bit more fuller flowers. I'm going to make one larger one and then two smaller ones. The two smaller ones just have two uh, layers each. I didn't need them to be too big and bulky. They're plenty and I will finish them off uh, with some centers in a little bit. And I also had three of those little leaves sitting there. I don't actually end up using those, but these were from a previous project. <laughs> I'll play guess the, uh, guess the video if you have watched any of my more recent ones and you'll be able to see which video they came from. But here I'm doing the same trick to adhere down my panel onto the front of my card, just like I showed you before, so that it is nice and even. I knew it was going to be too long at the bottom, but I knew as long as uh, the top was all lined up nicely, it would be straight. So I have that big, nice, thick panel down the middle. And then I have two of these skinny little pieces just to add a little bit more to the card design. These cards are very, very simple to create. And of course you could recreate any of these cards using uh, pattern paper that you already have, or you could create anything. If you had some background sitting around, this would work as well. But I was just having a whole lot of fun with this printing technique and thought that I would quickly show you a video on it today, given that I'm sure you probably have all the things in your stash to create it. And I love stretching my supplies. So 
and getting lots of different looks from using the same items. So I've popped these flowers down with a little bit of liquid glue. This is multi medium in the matte finish and I use the Ranger one. I'm going to pop down some white Nouveau drops in the center of these flowers here. And I actually decided to have no sentiment on this card. I just really like the clean and simple design and that leaves it wide open for whatever I would like to write on the inside when I give this one away. Now this one here was also another favorite of mine and I couldn't resist using it. I truly am actually going to use pretty much the same card design. So I do apologize for that, but I was kind of on a roll and really liked how the first one turned out. So I just kept going because I was in my happy space. I had kind of had fun creating and using this little printing design. And then I was just really on a roll and enjoying this. These cards are very clean and simple. As I said, you can go further with these and um, create all sorts. So I really look forward to seeing what you come up with. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've given this technique a try. I'm sure you have. I didn't invent it, but it was just fun and kind of occurred to me. And so I thought that I would give it a go. Now these are the outlined alphabet metal dies. These are from Paper Rose and I purchased these. I did buy a couple of little things. Um, I had a little break from YouTube recently just for a week or so and I did purchase some new bits and pieces just to kind of inspire me. So you'll see these turning up again and again. They die cut out the center and also an outline of each of the letters. So I ended up cutting these out in some plain white cardstock and also some silver glitter cardstock and I'm going to do the white on the inside and the silver glitter on the outside. And this is just going to say love straight down the center. Again, I'm not going to add any extra sentiments or any extra bits and pieces onto this one. I just wanted to keep it really nice and simple. And sometimes I look for these cards when I don't have a particular um, kind of sometimes I feel like the sentiment can be too specific so I really like ones that are a little more general or don't even have a sentiment at all that way I can write my words in the center and I really don't have to worry about kind of finding the perfect sentiment sometimes I do but sometimes it's just nice not to so that's what these cards were today and I was just enjoying crafting and being in my little happy place so I hope that you have enjoyed this video today I will leave links to anything that um, I can find or that is uh, still being sold down in the description box below the video. Other than that, I will leave links to my Facebook group where you can come and show me your projects. And I did finish this one off just by adding some little pink uh, sparkly glittery Nouveau drops. But apart from that, this card is all done. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this. And please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.